in this sub-module, I will introduce you to the basic of application writing, starting with classical communication, how to create EPR pairs, and how to do local qubit operations. We will lastly explain the function of the program meta object. A user has to write the code that they wish to uh, perform in a program inside the run method of a program class. This program, uh, this run method is given a program context. This program context contains the various objects that you need uh, for your quantum program. These are, for example, the connection object. Uh, the connection object um, is, represents the connection to the QMPU, and we use it to send the instructions uh, that you compile to the QMPU and make the QMPU execute these instructions. Then we have uh, classical sockets. Uh, we uh, obtain the correct classical sockets uh, for, in this case, to Bob by taking the context dot uh, C sockets. And then this C sockets object, this is a dictionary. So we must uh, address it with the correct key for the, to get the correct sockets uh, we wish to get. In this case, we want to have the socket to Bob. Uh, but in order to avoid typos and make the code more reusable, we will be using this self.peer uh, name, uh, this class variable, in order to uh, make this a little bit easier for us. Then lastly, you can get the EPR socket uh, from the context. So this is similar to the classical socket. We need to pick out the correct uh, EPR socket, uh, in this case to Bob. Then, in order to do classical communication, we simply need to use the classical socket. So we take the C socket and then use the send method. And then we can put whatever message we wish to send. So, for example, we can put hello from Alice over here. Now, we can copy this code uh, up to the Bob program. And then we can finish uh, the required code in order to send this classical message. So Bob needs to receive instead of send. He will get a message. And then we will print this message. Now, in order to make this code work, we need to add this yield from statement over here. This is because we need to wait for the event that the classical message arrives at Bob's side. And this is, again, due to more deeper technical reasons of how the SquidASM integrates with the uh, event engine underneath. Uh, but this is, uh, for a user, this practically always boils down to the that they need to add these yield from statements in three locations uh, where they are waiting for a program uh, for something, namely when they are waiting for classical messages to arrive, when they are waiting for the QMPU to finish completing its instructions, or when they have created a method that uh, has these classical messages or QMPU instructions inside and they wish to uh, invoke that method. So, now we can run this code uh, by pressing Shift F10, and then we can see uh, we have our message arriving. Uh, Bob has received a message from Alice. Now let us move on to generating uh, entangled qubits via the EPR socket. So the EPR socket, it functions a little bit similar to the classical socket. We take the EPR socket, then we uh, use the create keep method. From the create keep method, we will get a qubit object. And we have to select the first element out of this create keep. That's because this create keep method is set up to generate a list of qubits uh, where you can specify the amount of qubits uh, via the number argument. Per default, this number is set to one. So uh, we get a list of one qubit out of here and we have to select that one qubit out. After receiving that qubit, we can directly measure the qubit and store the measurement result in the variable m. Next up, it's important to note that now we have to send these instructions to the QMPU. And in order to do that, 
we use the connection object and the push method. This will both compile and send the instructions to the QMPU. And then we wait for the QMPU to finish these instructions. Lastly, we then print uh, the value. So ls measures. Then we take this piece of code and copy and paste it to Bob's site. So um, Bob has to uh, use a different method. He needs to use the receive keep. Uh, that's because while the entanglement generation process is symmetrical, the sort of preceding software interaction, it has an initiating party and a receiving party. And we distinguish those by using either the create keep or the receive keep method. And then with that, we can run this code. And we see Alice and Bob both measure one. So this one means that uh, measurement in the set basis was performed and they measured up. If we can run it a few more times, we see uh, that we get either one or zero, but they're always perfectly, uh, they're always the same. That's because the uh, qubits, they're perfectly entangled uh, because of the underlying model that we've used is to generate perfectly entangled qubits uh, between Alice and Bob. Now, next up, we might want to generate uh, local qubits in order to do some uh, uh, operations where we don't have a qubit that's entangled with another node. For that, uh, we need to use the qubit object, and then we give that a connection. For this example, I'll be using two qubits, and I'll apply some uh, gates to the qubits. So, um, the qubit objects, uh, they have various gates you can apply to them. So all the single qubit gates, you can find them like the X, uh, Y, Z. You can also uh, have the various rotation gates uh, over here. And you just simply apply a gate by uh, placing the method um, of the gate that you want to apply uh, to the qubit. So currently we have a circuit where we only apply a uh, Hadamard gate to the first qubit. Two qubit gates work uh, a little bit differently but also still quite similar. There's only two, two qubit gates. We have the controlled phase gate and we have the controlled C0 gate which we'll be using. Um, and uh, the two qubit gates work by the first um, qubit you use, that's going to be the control qubit, and the second qubit that you provide as an argument, that will be the target qubit. So we now have a small circuit where we first rotate the first qubit and then apply a C0, and that will uh, entangle both of these qubits with each other. And then after that we will perform measurements of both qubits. Then we need to send these instructions to the QMPU. And again, we do that by connection.flush. And then after this, we can print our results. And we prefer now run our code with shift F10. We see that uh, we get the same result for M1 and M2. And if we run it a few more times, uh, we see uh, they both all find like one or zero, but they're always uh, the same. Now, lastly, we have to uh, discuss briefly the, this program meta object. This program meta object, this specifies your, the requirements of the program on the network. Uh, so in this case, what we're uh, saying in this line is that in order for this program to function, we need to have a classical socket, uh, a classical connection to Bob in this case, and also that we require an EPR socket to Bob. If we do not specify uh, this uh, C socket, 
uh, then we will also not receive this C socket. So for example, if I now try to run my simulation, uh, I encounter an error that will happen on this line. That's because this C socket object is not available inside this dictionary over here. 